Hinnock. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's now been uh, 67 days since the Prime Minister delayed the meaningful vote in December. 67 utterly wasted days for our country yeah, yeah, yeah. as the clock ticks down to 11pm on the 29th of March. The Prime Minister continues the pretense that she's seeking concessions from the EU, but she knows she's not going to get them. We all know her reckless game. Keep that clock ticking down and keep bullying MPs into backing her deal or no deal. But we also know this is a false choice, as our country is simply not prepared for a no-deal scenario. The Government's failure to reach out and build cross-party consensus has left us in deadlock. So how do we unlock this logjam? Well, the answer has been hiding in plain sight, and it's called Common Market 2.0. Common Market 2.0 would mean joining Norway outside of the EU but inside EFTA and the EEA, establishing a form of customs union with the EU, maintaining a close economic relationship with the EU, but leaving the more political aspects of European integration. Common Market 2.0 would involve leaving the withdrawal agreement precisely as it is, whilst radically recasting the political declaration on the future relationship, something that the EU has repeatedly said it's open to doing. The Leader of the Opposition's letter to the Prime Minister on 7th of February was certainly a step in the right direction, but it's vital that we put more flesh on the bones by making an explicit commitment to joining the EEA via the EFTA pillar. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister's political declaration is a bridge to nowhere. Common Market 2.0 would transform the political declaration into a bridge to a clear, stable and exciting future for our country. It would mean safeguarding jobs, guaranteeing workers' rights, providing new controls over freedom of movement, allowing more money for public services as our contributions to the budget would be significantly lower, taking the UK out of the common fisheries policy, common agricultural policy and out of the jurisdiction of the ECJ and eliminating the need for the Irish backstop. The last point is crucial given that this is dominating the debate. So let me explain why our proposals would uh, remove the need to ever activate the backstop. The fact is that a customs union alone won't solve the Irish border question because only 20% of the issues surrounding the border are customs issues. The remaining 80% are single market regulatory alignment issues. That's why we need both full participation in the single market and a strong customs union arrangement in place, at least until alternative arrangements can be agreed. But, as Brexiteers understandably ask, why would a form of comp comprehensive customs union be so infinitely preferable to the backstop? It doesn't solve the problems around sovereignty and conducting our tra tra own trade deals, they say. Well, here's what they're missing. Article 127 of the EEA agreement me means that we can leave the EEA unilaterally with a one-year notice period. Given that 80% of the Irish border issues are single market issues, then Common Market 2.0 would completely change the dynamics of our relationship with the EU, would give us far more leverage in the negotiations. Mr Speaker, we desperately need a Brexit that begins to reunite our deeply divided country. Common Market 2.0 is a strong compromise, and I believe that Parliament is ready to support this sensible, pragmatic, bridge-building approach. Brexit is a monster that's eating our politics, and it's time for us all to rediscover the lost art of compromise. It's time for Common Market 2.0.